Hi there, it's Jenna from scribblinggrace.com. Today I'm going to do another Bible Journal with Me tutorial video, and this time I'm doing a two-page spread. So you'll see that I start off just by putting pieces of paper um, behind my pages to protect the pages below it. I did not prep my page with anything. I very rarely do, and with acrylics it's really not necessary at all. So I'm going to use acrylics today. I've gotten asked so many times on how to do acrylic roses, which I do all the time on the Bibles that I paint and in occasional pages like this. And so I thought I would tape it and show you guys. So um, as I jump in, I'm just using my Apple Barrel paints. In the blog post that goes along with this video, I will list the names of all the colors that I used. Um, I really love Apple Barrel paints because they're super duper cheap and they're great for Bible journaling because I'm a um, big supporter of not spending too much money on Bible journaling. So any acrylic paints work just fine. Um, these ones are kind of a high flow acrylic, um, but any work. So <laughs> yeah, so um, as I'm preparing my background, I'm just I just took two colors of green. I like to have a variation of colors for my backgrounds, but of course you could just use one color. Um, and of course you could totally change these colors up completely and do a completely different background and completely different colors for your flowers if you wanted to try something like this. Um, I happened to be on Titus here, which is nice because um, this page has a bunch of blank space. But you'll see that you can really do this on any journaling Bible that has the wide margins. Um, I will do this other side here as well. So um, that'll give you an example on how to do with a more limited space. So um, I'm working, really focusing on Titus 2, 11 through 13, which says, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly possessions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, um, I'm going to really focus on the words, He brought salvation. Um, I think that this is a really interesting verse, and I have I feel like I haven't really read Titus very much. This was probably the first or second time I've ever read Titus, um, and it's such a nice little book. So to do my background, I really didn't do anything too fancy. I just kind of switched the colors around. I didn't really wash my brush. Um, I just used that flat brush and painted it all around the page, um, making sure, trying to not cover any of that scripture. Um, and I dried it using my acrylic or my craft heat gun. And again, I'll put all of the links to all of the supplies that I use um, in the blog post that goes along with this video at scribblinggrace.com slash watercolor or <laughs> acrylic roses, watercolor.com slash acrylic roses. And I'll put that link in the description below as well. So I just am using a hot pink, a light pink, and a white here, and a size 8 round paintbrush, but it really doesn't matter too much the size that you're using. So I started off by just painting two little bean shapes or little C shapes and um, that, you know, go towards each other. And then I'm going to add two more C shapes. So to make this shape, I'm just applying very little pressure, just the tip of the brush at the beginning. And then as I'm making my shape, I apply more pressure and that gives me that thick middle. And then I'll loosen up that pressure again to get back to just the tip of that paintbrush to um, to thin it back down to get another point at the other end. Of course, if your shape isn't perfect, you can always just go back over it and try to get that shape better. Um, you don't have to do it in just one swipe. And I'm basically just going to keep on going around in circles, creating these C shapes. And I'm going to overlap each C shape with the other, with the previous one. Um, that way it gives me that nice rosy look, I guess. <laughs> um, I go a little bit more in detail in my watercolor roses tutorial, so be sure to check that one out, um, especially if you're more keen on using watercolors over acrylics. Um, that's a really fun tutorial to look at. So um, I'm just going to keep on doing that. I 
change it up a little bit from the watercolor tutorial here where I end up kind of making smaller petals and um, not connecting them all the way. So I leave some um, open spaces, I guess. And at the end of this rose, you'll see once I grab that white, I um, end up kind of changing the shape completely. So I stop doing the full circle and just kind of fill in the spaces so that I get the kind of shape that I want, I guess. So um, you'll also notice that I used my darkest pink in the very middle. And then I grabbed a little bit of the light pink. I kept my brush with that dark pink um, from the center. I didn't clean it. Grabbed a little bit of the lighter pink to do the second circle around. So um, that first row of three, I guess, the circle of three. And then I went ahead and grabbed more of that light pink and just the light pink to do that last row that I just did with the four petals. And now I'm grabbing the white. So it goes, um, kind of gives you that gradient look from dark to light. And um, one thing to note about these acrylics with this dark background is that it is pretty um, transparent. So I'm going to go ahead and go over these roses twice to give me a nice opaque look. But it all depends on the look that you're going for. I feel like I'm maybe making it sound a little confusing, but it's really um, not too hard once you get the hang of it. It just takes a little bit of practice. Um, and really just that same shape over and over again. Just trying, it, the hardest part is combining um, all the petals together, together to make a good um, rose shape. But of course, roses aren't perfect. So you can see on this one, it's not a perfect circle. And I added that white in just three spots and not going all the way around it. So um, just keep that in mind that your shape doesn't have to be perfect. And this is also, you know, an impressionist rose, I guess. <laughs> all right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and paint these same roses all over my page. Um, I'm going to do three more. I'll say, yeah, three more of these types of roses and then I'm going to move on to a different type of rose. Um, I think it's kind of fun to combine different styles but this is also a good way to show you guys how I do my roses. So stay tuned. <laughs> second type of rose. So this one I feel is much easier and uh, much simpler because you don't really have to worry too much about the shape or the distance that the petals are or overlap or anything like that. You're just gonna paint what, I, what I'll describe as circles. So I started with my first circle which was that dark pink. Now I'm doing my second circle around that dark pink with the light pink and I add a little purple in this one. And now I'm going to go ahead and add my third circle with the white. And I don't really want, like rinse my brush or anything, I just kind of um, twirl my brush around on my palette so that it'll get off that excess paint, um, but it'll still have a little bit of that pinkish, purplish tint to it, which is totally fine. And um, I'm just keeping with that same C shape and just going around in that circle. I'm not stressing too much about how many petals I'm adding in each little circle. I'm just going with it. And I think that's my biggest tip that I can give you is just to have fun, just see where the art can take you. Um, the great thing about this type is that it really can look all, like any way that you do it, it'll still give you that impression of a flower, which is all we're wanting for this type of rose. Um, for that last rose I just painted, I even omitted the white, so that's something to note. Um, I like to have a little bit of variation, so even though I'm keeping with the same um, types of colors, or yeah, the same colors and the same uh, 
dark center and light outside, it'll still have a little bit of variation. Um, other than that, I'm not sure if I can <laughs> describe this very well, um, but hopefully as you're watching this, it'll make more sense. And of course, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. So those are my roses, but it looks a little strange um, without <laughs> with just the roses. So we're gonna go ahead and add some leaves. So I'm using kind of a lime green here for my first type of leaf. I'm gonna do three types, I think, and I'm gonna change the color up a little bit. So I'm starting with this lime green with a little bit of white in it, just to lighten it up. And um, I'm gonna do my first shape, which is this um, I don't know, leaf branch, I guess. And this one, I usually always do odd numbers. So I usually do about five to seven leaves on each little branch here. So I just start by using just the tip of my brush to do that branch or the middle, and then um, using the bulk of my brush to paint my leaf shape. And of course, if this is something that's a little strange for you, um, it just takes practice. But I do also have a blog post and a video all on watercolor leaves with a free printable on different leaf shapes that you can trace and stuff. So I'll put that link in the blog post that goes along with this video as well. Um, again, that blog post is at scribblinggrace.com slash water or <laughs> acrylic roses. <laughs> Um, and I'll put that link in the description below as well. So one of the rules to composition that I have learned is to do odd numbers. So you can see I have seven roses and um, this ro this uh, type of leaf shape, is, I'm doing five of them. So then I'm gonna go ahead and add some more leaves um, and I'll probably do five of this next bunch of leaves as well and this time I'm just taking the same one of the same colors from my background with a little bit of white so that it stands out from the background and it's the same shape as my um, lime green leaves but just bigger and only two of them um, these are the two main leaf shapes that I do on a regular basis <laughs> Now I'm going to go ahead and add one last leaf shape, um, this time in a darker color, and uh, it's the same as that five of my lime green one, but just a much smaller version. Um, I ended up adding a little too much white in this, so I'm going to go ahead and add some darkness to it. And um, while I'm doing that, I add a little bit of extra detail into my other leaves. Um, that just helps give it a little more finished look, I think. But that's, of course, just personal preference. And that's just a swipe of the paint um, on each little leaf there. <laughs> um, so that's it for painting-wise. I'm going to dry it with my heat gun, and then I'm going to add my lettering. So you can see that I have that big blank spot, and that is where I'm going to do my lettering. Um, so, all right. <laughs> So I am um, just going to write out my uh, He Brought Salvation with a pencil first. I was about to do it um, by eyeballing it, but it's always safe to use a pencil. And then I'm going to use my Sakura Decorese gel pen. And of course, again, I'll put that link in the description below or in the blog post goes along with this video. And I'm just writing out He Brought Salvation. And then this is using faux calligraphy here. So I'm writing out first in just a script, and then I'm gonna thicken up those downstrokes so that it gives me that calligraphy look. And of course, I have a video and a tutorial on this technique as well. Um, so be sure to go check that out if you wanna know more about this type of lettering that I'm doing. And once I do this with my gel pen, I uh, end up going over parts of it just to get it nice and opaque and spots that I missed. And um, then I'm going to add a little shadow using a um, Tombow Food No Suke brush pen, or you could just use a Micron or any type of um, black pen, really. And I just do that on the 
right side of all of my letters <laughs> of all yeah of the letters <laughs> um just to help it pop a little bit and that's about it that's my page i'll show you the back side of the page really quick you'll see there's no bleep through it all on the front page there's that little dark spot and that's just because it's not completely dry at that spot so you can see once it's dry it um there's definitely no bleed through at all. So I love using acrylics for that reason. Um, all right, so that's about it. If you found this tutorial helpful, I um, hope you will subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. And be sure to check out that blog post at scribblinggrace.com slash acrylic roses. And um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Find me on Facebook or Instagram as well. I'd love to hear from you. All right. Have a great day. God bless.